What's up everybody? I'm Johan Wilbrink and I'm one of the electrical product specialists here at NEF. Today I want to talk to you guys about Lloyd's RSL 400 series safety laser scanners. These top of the line safety scanners come in a wide variety of models with a 270 degree range of sight with a unique angular resolution of 0.1 degrees. Now this small resolution actually allows the sensor to tell the difference between dust and debris versus objects that you're actually trying to detect such as humans. This makes the sensor a lot less prone to false detection than other sensors on the market. Taking a closer look at the sensor models, the two most common sensor models we see used are the RSL410 and RSL430. The RSL410 is our baseline model, and that's the model we see most used. It comes with one set of OSSDs, which gives you one protective field and up to three warning fields. Now these warning zones are typically used to signal a stack light or sound of alarm to let people know they're approaching a dangerous zone before stopping the machine. Moving up to the RSL430, you get two sets of OSSDs, which gives you two protective zones and up to 10 warning fields per protective field. That means you essentially have two sensors in one. Now this is nice when you have applications where you need to have two access areas side by side. Now taking a closer look at the sensors themselves, you'll see they come in a nice industrial yellow housing with bright LED indicators on the front. Along with that, you'll notice that there's a panning screen on the front and this will show you the angle and distance at which the sensor was faulted. Along with that, you can also ping the sensor, which is nice, and it'll show the device's name. So this is nice in applications when you have multiple laser sensors hooked up on one machine and you're connected to the system and you're trying to see which sensor you're talking to. If you ever do damage this, because it does happen, you don't have to worry about having to replace the whole sensor. You can just replace the body of it itself and you'll save a lot of money there. As for how the connect to the sensor goes, it's pretty simple. You have three different ways of doing that. You can connect to it via ethernet, USB, or even Bluetooth, which then will bring you to the next portion of this video, the software. So let's take a look at that. So the software can be downloaded for free from Lloyd's website. And once you have the software downloaded, this is what it's gonna look like once you get onto the landing page. If you look at the process tab, you're gonna get a live feed of what the sensor sees. So right here, it's gonna show all the LED indicators. This is nice if your sensor's in a hard to see location, you can't see all the LEDs on the front of the sensor. It also shows you all your, uh, your warning field and protective fields. Since this is set up as an RSL 410, you're only gonna see the protective and warning field here. I can change these other fields to warning fields as well, but we're just gonna keep it as just one warning field and one protective field for today. Moving to the configuration tab, you can name your project and you can do a description of this. This is nice if you have multiple scanners on one machine because now you can label it and give a description to what that sensor is specifically doing. So then once you move down to what the sensor actually sees, this is where the software becomes really helpful and easy to use. So as you can see here, we're currently looking at the other room. So we're in a square room and there's a lot of stuff up around me. If I zoom in closely here, you're gonna see this is my laptop and this is my arm. So I can move my arm in and out. So it's giving you a live feed of what the sensor sees. This is extremely helpful for setting the sensor up for the first time because you can see what the sensor sees and then you can box stuff out using your, your zones here. So setting your protective and warning zones, you come up here to the top. So right here, I have my protective zone and my, my warning zone. So selecting my protective zone here, you can set them up with just either a standard rectangle. So I can just come here and click the sensor. Maybe we can set up as a standard rectangle. Deletes right here. Uh, we can do ellipticals. You can come and set up ellipticals, however you want to do those. And you can also do, which is my favorite, the polygon. Now this allows you to box things out. So this is nice if you guys have posts or parts of your machine that are sticking out that you don't want the sensor to see. You can just come in and you can just box things out. So I'm gonna box my laptop out here. And there you go. Just set a unique protective field here. So now moving over to the warning field, you come in and you do exactly the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna make my warning field just a square for this time. So it's gonna be always tripped. But that's okay. So we set set up just like that. And now once I have that done, now downloading this to your sensor is very simple. You can see up here we have a pause, upload, and download. So now I can just hit download parameters and it's gonna just download the safety configuration as that's the only thing I had changed on this device. So I hit okay and you hit yes again. Now it's downloading. So once you have the software downloaded, you'll see here, you can see a live feed of what it sees. You can go over to the process tab now, and you can now see that that warning field's violated because I set that warning field to a larger area. So my computer and myself and a post over here is violating that warning field that we had set in place. 
So that's what's going to be showing here. So now my warning field is violated and it also shows it here with this blue LED. So now going back to that, that view, you can see where I'm at and I can now enter the protective field. And what that's going to do is going to switch on my protective, my protective field output there. So we can turn that on and off. You can see it here, it turns that light from green to red, saying that your, your safety outputs are broken. It also gives you up here a nice visual display at what angle your violation was done. This is an older model, so the newer models will show at what distance those violation happened along with the angle at which it happened, which is really nice for troubleshooting. Uh, another nice thing you can do with these sensors is you can also ping them. So if I hit ping here, it's gonna tell you the sensor's name. This is nice when you have a lot of sensors in the field and you're trying to figure out which sensor you're connected to and talking to. So that's the software in a gist. All right guys, thanks for watching. Reach out to your local NEF representative for further information and we'll get to you guys shortly.